So there's a question that keeps popping up time and time again on forums and anywhere online, which is when guys are running multiple amplifiers, they always ask, do I need to run a relay in line with my remote wire from the head unit to power up all these amplifiers safely? And the resounding answer in the comments is always yes. It's good practice to run a relay in line with your head unit remote line so the amplifiers can all be powered up by a solid 12 volt supply from the batteries uh, with the head unit just energizing the relay coil. Now, as someone that does call out audio amplifier repair for a living and understands electronics, this answer always confuses me a little bit. And to understand why that confuses me, we're going to do an experiment today. Here I have a standard 12 volt automotive relay, the kind that you would typically see people using to run in line with their remote wire from their head unit. This is a Songul SLD 12V DC relay. And the first test we're going to do is to identify how much current does this relay draw from the remote line in order to energize the coil to make the contact. So a relay is a mechanical device. It has an electromagnet, which is in the form of a coil, which will then energize and, and magnetize when a current is applied across it, pulling the contacts together, making a connection so that current can pass through the other contacts. So if we just energize the coil real quick with a 12 volts here from my bench power supply, we can see that energizing the coil requires about 130 milliamps. Okay, not very much, but that's how much current this relay is gonna draw from your head unit, energizing just the coil to make that contact, to make, to make the connections touch inside the relay to pass the 12 volts onto your amplifiers. Now we have that in mind. Let's now take a look at what we have on the bench. I have eight car audio amplifiers from all different brands. We've got some Lanzar crap, we've got some Alpine V12, we've got a Taramps MD, some Class AB stuff, Rockford Prime, uh, Bass Phase, a Chinese uh, 2000 watt RMS circuit, just all kind of different amplifiers here. And what I'm gonna do now is measure how much current is required across the remote line to power up these eight amplifiers, okay? So let's connect the uh, remote wire to my multimeter and then the other end of the multimeter going into the remote line of one of these amplifiers that are all daisy chained together on the remote line and let's turn the current up on my supply it might take a moment for the amps to all come on because there's eight of them on a 20 amp bench power supply so let's just wait for these to all turn on okay all amplifiers are up and running and as we can see here all eight amplifiers drawing from the um, remote line equals 48 milliamps which is less than half what was required to energize the coil in this single relay. Eight amplifiers, look, you can see they're all powered up. Let's grab the camera here. One, two, three, the blue lights, four, five, six, seven, eight amplifiers, all powered up and all drawing current from the remote line, less than half what was required to power up a single relay. So you could run 16 amplifiers and still draw less current across the remote line than energizing the coil in this single relay. If you're running multiple amplifiers in your car audio system, you don't need to run a relay. And in most cases, running a relay will actually put your head unit under more stress than just hooking up your three, four, five, six, 16 amplifiers in daisy chain. Now, I'm just gonna show you some of the components that these amplifiers have inside them, uh, which, which is to do with the remote turn-on. Inside these amplifiers, what deals with the remote turn-on is usually, you're, all you're doing is you're energizing one tiny leg of a transistor. All you're doing is you're just sending a couple of electrons which causes this transistor to go into an on state which activates the rest of the circuit for like a microprocessor to turn on. It's a logic level signal. Energizing like part of the remote circuit is, is just logic level. It doesn't barely draw any current whatsoever. As you can see here, even 16 amplifiers is less current than a single relay. And some of the amplifiers, the more modern ones, use surface mount parts. And this is the, the size of the transistor that you're needing to energize. The camera probably won't focus on this because it's so small, but that's the size of the transistor you're needing to energize or you're needing to pass current through in order to get the amplifier powered up. And you can see the size difference between that and the relay. Now, if you look at the data sheets for all different kinds of head units, you'll find that a lot of them give a specification for how much current the remote line can supply. And the majority of the time, you'll find that the remote line can happily supply around one amp or even in excess of one full amp to the remote line and as you can see here eight amplifiers was like 48 milliamps so you're going to need 
like how many amplifiers until you start saturating the head unit it's going to be hundreds of amplifiers which is why i say no you don't need a relay just daisy chain the amplifiers together it's one less component to fail it's one less bit of wiring it's one less connection point you've got to make in your car audio system and then for the majority of the time unless you're running like more than 10 20 amplifiers off the same head unit it's going to end up drawing less current from your head unit than a single relay will do so hopefully this has been enlightening and interesting for you and when you go about doing your next car audio installation and you're running multiple amplifiers you could just go ahead and daisy chain the remotes together and have peace of mind that your head unit is not under any additional stress than what it was designed for.